I go to the gym. Floyd end up letting me use his gear. And I end up sparring one of the tank homeboys. We're supposed to be like six rounds. I stopped dude in like four rounds. That's Monday. So on Wednesday, me and dude was supposed to spar again. He came up to me, you'll get tanks and rounds. So I'm like, yeah, but I'm supposed to spar tank dude. Tank probably try and get his Get, get back, back. yeah, yeah, because he yeah. feel like, damn, he did him crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, Hold so on, he let, trying, let me get in there with him. He trying to get his get back for his partner. Me and Tank got in there. It was good. The first, it was good work. It was good work. Gervonta Tank Davis, the WBA regular lightweight champion, prepares to defend his title against the formidable Frank Martin. And many pros and fans believe Martin will beat Davis due to some recent sparring footage that was leaked. According to recent reports, Gervonta Davis and Frank Martin have allegedly reached an agreement to face off in a pay-per-view bout under the PBC banner in either either spring or early summer. According to Mike Coppinger, Davis and Martin have finalized a deal to face each other next, putting an end to the speculation regarding Davis's next opponent. Coppinger tweeted, Gervonta Davis and Frank Martin have agreed to a deal for a PBC PPV fight in late spring, early summer for Tank's WBA lightweight title, sources tell ESPN. Davis's legal trouble sidelined him the second half of last year, but now he's back versus a legitimate top 10 lightweight. It's a solid matchup, but it's unlikely to generate 1 million pay-per-view buys, unlike Gervonta's previous bout against Ryan Garcia. Tank tends to attract more buys when facing opponents such as Ryan, Devin Haney, or Shakur Stevenson. However, Tank has an important message for Martin. Is that, is that a fight you'd want you to entertain in the future, Frank Martin? Yeah, for sure. Of course. Hell yeah. You ever take yeah. all about him? Like, man... No, but I seen Earl say some say some uh, stuff about it. Earl better watch out because his fighter hurt bad. Like I did before. Although no one from Davis's team has suggested that Martin will get the opportunity, considering Devin Haney's participation at 140 pounds and Shakur Stevenson being perceived as on a different promotional side, Martin presents an intriguing option. Time and again, the Detroit native has expressed his eagerness to step into the ring with Davis. There's also a history between them. In previous years, they have engaged in intense sparring sessions, each trying to outdo the other. If Martin receives the opportunity, given his background, he could pose a significant challenge to Davis. It just showed me like these guys ain't off the radar you know they ain't he ain't do nothing to you that like you ain't never had happen to you or you know yeah. it wasn't nothing it wasn't nothing like that i didn't go in there like oh this is javante tank davis right. you know i didn't get in the ring like that that's what a lot of people do i got in there like he's just another you know spawn partner and the spawn was it was solid but now was it here in Vegas? It was, was in it, Vegas, It was yeah. at, at the Mayweather gym? Floyd gym. Give me some perspective on that because you hear all these stories like they had the doghouse where those guys are all around the court, they, they tapping the mat and doing all, what, what was that like? It was probably about 40 people in the yeah. gym. Floyd was even there. It was live, you know, they wasn't, it was just everybody was loud, you know, it was, it was they weren't hitting the ring or nothing, but everybody was just like, like stuck kind of, you know, in the sparring, but that's, that's what it was. What was the best compliment you got maybe after everything was done? I was a beast. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, man, like they're just looking like, man. Yeah. You got some. However, for those who think he can achieve what 29 others haven't, Leonard Ellerby, CEO of Mayweather Promotions, firmly believes you're mistaken. Ellerby said, Frank Martin can't beat Tank Davis. None of those guys can beat Tank Davis. Frank's a good fighter. He can't beat Tank, though. Ellerby, for the most part, has heard these claims before. He's heard past lightweight contenders like Ryan Garcia loudly proclaim what they'll achieve against Davis, only to fall significantly short in the ring. At present, Martin's name is gaining momentum. However, Ellerby remains non committed middle about whether he's the leading candidate or not. To those eagerly awaiting an announcement, Ellerby emphasized that when the moment arrives, you'll receive the information straight from the source. He said, Tank will decide who he's fighting, and when he decides that, he'll make an announcement. Tank is the boss. He'll be fighting soon. While the boxing community is abuzz with excitement over this matchup, Shakur Stevenson finds himself frustrated on the sidelines. However, rather than airing his grievances, Stevenson responds with a lighthearted comment. Like I said before, um... I can't force these fighters to get in the ring. Um, he was going to make quadruple more than what, what he made in his career, his highest payday. So uh, for him to turn me down and then turn down a title shot, uh, he better hope that he ever get that opportunity again because opportunities like that only comes once in a lifetime. Stevenson took to his Instagram and posted a video with the caption, Shakur's reaction to Tank versus Martin being confirmed, depicting a man throwing his wine glass in frustration and exclaiming profanities. Nah, this was hilarious, not gonna lie, he commented. Intriguingly, both Davis and Martin have a connection with the WBC lightweight champion. Both have previously declined a bout with Stevenson, particularly Martin, who rejected the offer last autumn. Yeah, yeah it was really bad. Uh, he kept saying about me, uh, getting 8 million and all this extra stuff that he read on Twitter. Uh, 
uh, he just made himself look real bad in that video. Um, he let the world know that he, he was ducking me when he, when he did that. Video. Significantly, Davis encountered legal issues that disrupted his career and prevented him from participating in a fight during the latter half of the year. In contrast, Stevenson has recently reconsidered his decision to retire from boxing, motivated by his inability to secure a high-caliber opponent. At the age of 26, he declared his retirement, disheartened by criticism of his underwhelming performance against Edwin de los Santos and the challenges in securing deals with Tank or Emmanuel Navarrete. However, his retirement was short-lived as he quickly reversed his decision. I'll fight any and everybody that I do. See y'all in June, Stevenson wrote. Bob Arum is actively seeking a suitable opponent for him. Although the American boxer has entertained the notion of facing Teofimo Lopez, it seems unlikely for him to ascend to a weight class filled with talents like Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. Beyond Davis, the 135-pound division lacks notable names. I said no to the fight. Well, we made a deal with uh, uh, Tom Brown uh, and it would have guaranteed Martin uh, six or seven times more than he ever made. A million, right? Over a million. And uh, uh, Tom Brown closed the deal in good faith. And then the kid said he wasn't going through. Meanwhile, there's been no mention of the guaranteed purse for Tank, but it would be disheartening if he doesn't receive the $25 million that promoter Eddie Hearn suggested Gervonta could have potentially earned for a matchup against welterweight contender Conor Ben. Martin, for the most part, doesn't covet the fame they garner. While his name may not resonate as loudly as theirs, Martin is confident in his ring prowess and believes he's prepared to take on both of them. In a recent interview, Martin said, I feel like I'm ready for Gervonta Davis and Shakur Stevenson. I'm ready for them. Remaining relatively silent, Martin has kept a low profile. Instead, he adheres to a repetitive daily routine, spending mornings at the gym, resting in the afternoon, and resuming training later in the evening. Uh, I'm ranked right there with him. I could be any of them, you know, so I'm ranked right there with him. Obviously, I, I would think you feel that way because you know your skills, but say like someone were to be like, well, what makes you think you're on that level with those guys? What would you tell them? Who have they fought? You know, so for, for somebody to say, they man, I got some belts or whatever, but none of none of us ain't fought the real dogs. Honestly, in the in the division, ain't none of ain't none of us went head to head for real, for real. So. Who have they fought? At 28 years old, Martin is dedicated to his regimen, believing that the time for action is now or never, given the effort he has invested. He said, I don't train and be in the gym day in and day out to not be ready for those guys. Meanwhile, upon Coppinger's announcement, Dallas Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons expressed his excitement. Upon Coppinger's tweet, Parsons expressed his hope that Martin would represent Dallas well against Davis. Parsons said, Boxing fans, we're back! This is major! Frank has to represent Dallas! Given Parsons' confidence in Martin's skills, Let's examine Martin's professional record in this context. Conversely, Martin is known in the ring as the Ghost and has secured victories against notable opponents such as Artem Harutunian, Michael Rivera, Romero Duno, and Jackson Marinas. That's when you will be really be able to tell, just like Earl and Terrence, this is a, a, a dog fight, you know? Lightweight ain't fought no dog fight shit, so they, they, time gonna tell, you know, who the real dogs when the real dogs fight each other. Previously, Errol Spence expressed he wanted Frank to fight someone like Gervonta or Shakur instead of someone like Keyshawn Davis. He said, I know why he keeps saying Keyshawn Davis. I mean, he's a good fighter. I like him. But he always talks about, oh, I'm only 5-0. and zero. I'm only 6-0. and zero. Whatever he is, 7-0. and zero. He always says that so if he fights Frank and Frank beats him, he's going to say, oh, I was only 7-0. and zero. It would definitely be a good fight. Furthermore, Spence expressed that, in his opinion, Frank was ready for bigger challenges, though timing was crucial. He wanted to see Frank in matches against higher caliber opponents like Shakur Stevenson or Gervonta Davis, highlighting the financial and professional benefits of such bouts over a fight with Keyshawn Davis. He emphasized the importance of financial gains in the sport and suggested that facing and overcoming a more formidable opponent like Shakur or Gervonta could elevate Frank's career. Spence added, I feel like he's ready, but he's got to wait his time, man. I want to see Frank fight. You know, maybe Shakur Stevenson, you've got Tank, a lot of big fights. He ain't getting paid nothing fighting Kay Davis, you know? At the end of the day, regardless of all these deals and things like that, it's about the money, man. He's sharp as hell, but somebody's got to get in there and make him uncomfortable. Moreover, Spence reflected on the notion that many fighters maintain their composure and confidence until they face a truly challenging opponent. I don't know why people keep saying Keyshawn Davis. I mean, he's he a good fighter. I like him, but like he always talk about, oh, I'm only 5-0, I'm only 6-0, whatever he is, 7-0. He always say that, so... If he fight Frank and Frank beat him, he gonna say, oh, I'm on it. I was on the 7-0. 
It would definitely be a good fight. I feel like he's ready, but Keisha ain't got to wait his time, man. I want to see Frank fight, you know, maybe Shakur Stevenson. You know, you got Tank. A lot of big fights. He's not going to... And he ain't get paid enough to fight Keshawn Davis. You know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a, regardless of all these belts and things like that, it's about the money, man. That's like Chris Hart, okay. sharp as hell. But somebody got to get in there and make him uncomfortable. <laughs> hey, Shakur like that. He like that for sure. But I feel like, you know, nobody ever took Shakur out of his element either. There's been a lot of guys like that until they, until they fight somebody. Really like that too, and they end up getting beat. Spence implied that even someone as skilled as Shakur Stevenson could potentially falter if matched with a fighter of significant caliber, suggesting that every fighter has their limits and can be taken out of their element under the right circumstances. Spence said, He's like that for sure, but I feel like, you know, nobody ever took Shakur out of his element either. It's been a lot of guys like that until they fight somebody really like that too, and they end up getting beat. On the other hand, Frank Martin discussed the potential of facing William Zapita next, expressing, I really really want William Zapita. I'm going to sit down with my team, see if they can push for that for me, and I can secure that WBA belt. Oscar De La Hoya mentioned a specific condition that needed to be fulfilled for Frank Martin to consider a bout with William Zapita. De La Hoya suggested that Martin should first face Shakur Stevenson before contemplating any fight with Zapita. Oscar stated, fight Stevenson, and then I'll think about it. Frank Martin sent a nice message out to all of the fighters who are calling for a fight with him too. So, it's been a whole lot of talking, a whole lot of bullish going on, but I'm in the lab, you know what I mean? I'm working consistently, getting better, growing, and all that. He acknowledged the chatter, particularly from Keyshawn, noting that while it's fine for him to continue building his fan base and reputation, it doesn't affect Martin's preparation and mindset. Frank Martin emphasized his resilience and determination, making it clear that he's not easily intimidated or swayed by the talk and remains committed to his growth and performance in the sport. What do you think of the fight? We could go. We, we could go. We could go. You know, I just fought the uh, title eliminator or whatever for the WBA, so we can go. What would that fight look like? It'll be a good fight. It'll be an explosive fight, fast, two fast fighters, two strong, explosive fighters. Uh, it'll be a dope, dominant fight, you know. Explosive fight. It'll be an explosive fight. Do you feel like you guys being familiar with each other, from sparring and whatnot, that, that would play a role in the fight at all? Nah, you know, that was that was years ago. You know what I mean? So uh, he had come to the to the ring with some something different and then, you know, vice versa, I did the same. However, Oscar added, so all that Keyshawn is talking about, you know, like that's cool. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. Keep growing your fan base. You're doing all that. You know what I mean? But ain't nobody stepping on over here. I'ma tell you that right now. You know what I mean? I ain't going for none of that. Nothing. You hear me? So, you can get that out of your system, my boy. Gervonta's track record in the ring has been a topic of debate among various fighters, with Shakur Stevenson notably joining the conversation. Uh, we're going to see. Um, like I said, I think this is a better fight. I think that Edwin is a better fighter than Frank. I think that the media made Frank uh, this big fight for me because of the fact that he had Errol Smith behind Stevenson also criticized the quality of opponents Gervonta has been facing, arguing that his string of knockouts in pay-per-view matches doesn't negate Stevenson's own capability to defeat him. Shakur stated, he fights pay-per-view, knocking these dudes out. That doesn't take away the fact that I can beat this dude. That dude gets to feeling himself and feeling like he's something that he's not. To the world, he looks like a killer, but I can't wait. I'm going to expose him. I promise you. He suggested that Gervonta might be overestimating his own prowess and misleading the public with his intimidating persona. Shakur confidently stated his intention to reveal Gervonta's true level by being the fighter who withstands his power, forcing Gervonta to endure a full 12-round match without securing a knockout. I got to make sure that I'm on top of my game because um, there's a lot of great fighters in the division. Even though I think the division was overrated because they wasn't fighting each other. But now that they fight each other, uh, there's a lot of great fighters and I gotta be on top of my game. Stevenson believes that dominating Gervonta in such a manner would significantly impact Gervonta's confidence and mental state, thereby exposing him to the boxing world as less formidable than perceived. He added, watch, I'm going to be the person that will expose him. I'm going to be the person he goes in there and he's not going to knock out. He's got to go 12 rounds with somebody beating him. He ain't going to like that. That's going to mess with his heart, with his head. Watch. Gervonta clearly isn't a supporter of Shakur, and he's mentioning how some of his contemporaries in the 135-pound division are vocal these days. Some of your 135 contemporaries have a lot to say these days. Uh, Shakur Stevenson, well, of course, he's now 135 after all that stuff, and then Devin Haney. It, right, so why do people even talk like he the best at... He didn't even fight at 135 yet. Right. He didn't even, he, he didn't even have power at 126, 30, or none of that. He is good. 
okay? How can you, all that shit's okay. How can you stop people that can actually hit? No matter all that boxing, you gonna get hit. What you gonna do when you get hit? Shakur Stevenson, who has now moved up to 135, and Devin Haney are being talked about as if they're the best, even though Shakur hasn't even fought at 135 yet. Gervonta said, he didn't show much power at 126 or 130 either. He's decent, sure, but how do you handle opponents who can really hit? No matter how much you train in boxing, you're bound to get hit. What's your plan when that happens? Meanwhile, Leonard Ellerby has reassured fans that they'll witness Gervonta fight the prominent names they've eagerly anticipated seeing in the ring. Leonard emphasized that Tan Tank is willing to face anyone he desires because of his stature in the sport, regardless of whether there's a title on the line. He personally knows Tank's determination, affirming that Tank will indeed square off against the opponent's fans clamor for. It's just a matter of time, as Tank Davis is here to stay and is committed to fulfilling his objectives, even if not everything aligns perfectly in terms of timing. Leonard Ellerby said, I know Tank's determination firsthand, and I can affirm that he will indeed face the opponents the fans are clamoring for. It's just a matter of time. Tank Davis isn't going anywhere. He's here to stay and is wholly committed to achieving his goals, even if the timing doesn't always work out perfectly. Now, do you remember the sparring between Martin and Davis? So, Aki TV released a video on YouTube detailing an event that occurred between them. Now, I heard from one of the coaches at Floyd Gym that it was one day, the first time uh, Frank Martin came down there um, uh, from uh, Jerome in the house, from Coach Jerome. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, he said uh, that, that when Martin came in there, Tank was like, hey, I wanna fight him. So he said Floyd came to him like, yeah, Tank wanna glove up with your man. According to their coverage, the Ghost had a sparring session with Tank at the gym owned by Floyd Mayweather Jr. During this session, the Ghost used gear previously worn by the undefeated former champion and allegedly challenged Gervonta Davis significantly, a claim Davis denies. The situation between the two escalated quickly, leading to a heated exchange. Eventually, they were separated by others present at the scene. Okay. And he was like, well, he ain't got no gloves or nothing on, so, you know, um, he, ain't, he ain't come down here with his equipment. And he said Floyd let him use his gloves and his cup and uh, to, to spy Tank. And he said he gave Tank the business, and he said him and Floyd had to jump in the ring and break them apart because Tank wanted to take the gloves off and really get, he, well, he said both of them wanted to take the gloves, but it was Tank wanted to take them gloves off for real and really, really fight them, you know what I'm saying? You say he, 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 he stunned Tank or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm. The video also includes a segment from a media session with the ghost. I may actually get something by the end of the year. You know, I might Miami talk about the end of the year. And y'all know, you know, I know you sparred with Tank. Is that a fight you want? You know? Yeah, yeah, that, we can make that happen. That'd be, that'd be a fight that I would want, you know? If the opportunity presents. Addressing the recent sparring incident, a reporter inquired if a bout with Davis is something he's looking to pursue. Martin replied, yeah, we can make that happen. That'll be a fight. I want you to know if the opportunity presents itself. Similarly, the perspective isn't much different on the other side. When addressing a group of reporters, Gervonta Davis responded affirmatively, saying, yeah, for sure. After being asked if he would consider taking on a fight with Frank Martin in the future. Tank people had came up to me and just had asked me, uh, where I get tanks around or whatever. So I guess he was trying to redeem his homeboy. So uh, we got in there and, and, and we did, we did uh, like four rounds. They had to stop the sparring though. You know, they had to end up stopping the sparring cause you know, it was, it was, it was getting, it was getting, it was turned up. And the sparring man, we was like, it was back and forth, you know? This farm was back and forth, and you know, I landed some big shots, he landed some good shots. From the discussions on DAZN, it's evident that while Frank Martin has showcased skill and determination, there's a debate about whether he's ready to take on a high-caliber fighter like Gervonta Davis. Some analysts believe Martin needs more significant wins before facing someone of Davis's stature. Akin Reyes said he has a lot of attention as he trains in that Derek James stable, and he's been calling out big names like Tank and Keyshawn Davis, so he ran into a guy who came to win, and he had a tough fight. This perspective comes from evaluating Martin's performance, where despite showing dominant skills and ring generalship, he faced challenges that raised questions about his readiness for top-tier fighters. Reyes added, He lost rounds in there, but I still think he was the more skilled fighter, the more dominant fighter overall. He ran into trouble. Going into that fight late, it was a little questionable. This perspective suggests a more nuanced approach to assessing a fighter's position and potential in the competitive landscape of boxing. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.